victims of war and, and be a, a part of the solution. But I, I didn't know, and so I, I researched it. And I researched Bosnia because it was a country that happened to our generation. It's one that not many people speak about. Your extraordinary film uh, taught me a lot, and I watched it before I, I made uh, this film. But I, I wanted to learn, and so this was a, a chance for me to kind of give myself homework to learn about a country that I felt I should know, and we all should know. It was the 90s, and we don't talk about it enough, and, and, uh, and I felt a responsibility. And the more I learned, the more I fell in love with the people and the country and the area, and I was compelled to, to make the film. Okay, but I have to insist on this. Yes, please. What do. is good. the spark? <laughs> what is the spark? You know, sometimes it could be one line of a story. Sometimes it could be one picture. Yeah. You know, what was the moment when you said, "I'm going to um, do this"? You know what I'm I talking about. No, yes, I met with a woman. I'd been writing it in the way I spoke of, and I went. Bosnia, and I went, I met with victims of war, and I met with one woman who was, was an extraordinary woman, an extraordinarily damaged woman, and a woman who spoke about being used as a human shield and watching women who are older women be forced to, to strip and dance naked in front of soldiers. And the way she spoke about it was so, um, was just so moving, and she was clearly as I said, a really destroyed human being, and I was so, um, so she was always in my mind, and her story was always in my mind, and she's somebody who I felt I wanted to, to give a voice to, but I, um, so I suppose it's her. It was that just two women sitting alone in a dark room, and, and um, this very bad situation, because she was displaced in a way, so she wasn't in good conditions, um, and just feeling that, when all this other stuff in life we think about and all the things we worry about and sometimes you just sit and talk to that one other person and that other human being and you just realize what we should be focusing on and what you value and you're so grateful for the freedoms you've had and the chances you've had and, and, um, and that moral responsibility to try to do something that helps people to understand her pain and her suffering because nobody knows her. And, and so I was very moved, and, I, and, I'm, and that's what it was. That eventually was the thing that really like became a film. And I did, when I started this film, I, from my research, I, I, I put it out there, but I didn't expect it to happen, and I decided I would only make it if people from all sides of the conflict would come together, because I understood the divisions and the divisions forced upon the people in the area, and, and I wanted to try to find the balance as well as I could, as well as you can in this region, and I, and so when I sent it to people who were Bosnian Serb, Bosnian Muslim, and Serbian Serb, Croatian, and they all decided that they wanted to come together to make it, which I didn't think they would. And then they did, and they've taught me so much. Like this cast has taught me so much because they are not only just extraordinarily talented people, but they're really courageous, they're really deeply feeling, deeply intelligent, and, um, and have taught me more about life than I, any experience on any film in any part of my life than I've ever had. They've, um, they made the movie and I kind of got to show up every day and put the camera on them, but really it's their film. It's all them. And I, you know, my name's on it. So I think it's also a huge political decision to cast the um, Bosnians, um, Serbian, Croatians, and not have um, English-speaking famous actors. I find it totally liberal and refreshing. And you know, talking from the industry side of um, of, of things, I thought it's completely new political approach towards the filmmaking. Well, I, I just um, you know, it belonged to them, and it didn't. They were cheaper. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I suppose the box office, the, the, the producers were very, uh, you know, I think we had these extraordinary producers who when I said to them, it belongs to these people and I want to cast locally. Um, what was really exciting to me is, you know, as, as much as people have goodwill in Hollywood, when you say, I want to cast all locally, and they say, okay, but, you know, can we see some of the people from the region? 
you know, who's, who's there, what kind of talent is there. And then it was like discovering a jewel, you know, you, kind of, you see their tapes and you see this extraordinary talent and then you go and you show the producer and you say, look, this is the talent of the region. And they say, we got it, they're the best. So. So for me, it's uh, fantastic that you did, um, at the same time, English and Bosnian um, scenes. So how that worked? It was really hard on them. <laughs> it was, we, uh, we, dis we discussed just a few days before filming, we had this discussion that, that this is a film, but it's also an educational film, and we wanted to reach as many people as possible, but that if we, if we only shot it in the authentic language, it would be for people who like these subject matters and are interested in history and are interested in watching foreign films. But what about all those people who aren't? And all those people who aren't, we really, really want to teach them about this, and we really want to, them to be open to it. So we discussed it, and I discussed it with the cast, and it's a crazy idea, but do you think you could do this in both? And we have 41 days, and not a lot of money, and really heavy scenes, so you, on average, get two takes of each. And, but this is why. And they said, 100%, let's do it, we can do this. And it was amazing, because can you imagine these scenes are so emotionally difficult, and they would do these heart-wrenching, difficult, emotional, physical scenes, and we'd say, fine, you know, amazing. Now let's do it again, in another language. <laughs> they go, okay, two minutes, and I sit down. We're ready. And they did it again. And both versions are equally as good. They're talented, equally in both. It's really impressive. So in U.S. cinemas, you have English version at the moment, oh? No, you know, what's interesting is, which I was so excited, is we, we, we screened it, and of course we want the authentic language, because I think a lot of people, I wish people will hope to, you know, I like to hear things as they sounded, and I think a lot of people do. So we, we polled people, and they felt equally about both in America. And, and then everybody agreed that fine, go with the one that you believe is the, you know, the one that you love, that you feel is the most authentic. So we actually released it in, in the local language. It's not in English. But now in English, like television, when it comes on pay-per-view and things like this, for people that are sitting at home and not sure, it's actually in both, which is the first time they've ever done that. So every direct TV and thing has two options, and, and the Blu-ray disc and all that stuff, which I'm learning about, is in, is in both. You have two discs. So, so it's, uh, it's, it's in both, but, um, but what's been nice is internationally everybody has wanted to hear them speak in their local language, and it's such a beautiful language, as I can say to you. For me, most powerful thing was this ambivalence of sex and politics in the wider way, you know, politics is a maintaining of power in, in the film. It was very often that I was not sure is Isla manipulating or she's really in, in a passionate relationship with him or is it love. Um, I, I like that very much and I like moments when it's shifting this power from one to the other. Um, but on one way I was thinking, okay, there, you portrayed very well this patriarchal structure of Balkan society. Um, Daniel is completely under power of his father, of mythology, um, and so on. And I was hoping that he will maybe get out of it. Yes. For me, he's the main character. The father? No, 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 the, uh, Daniel. Oh, Daniel. Daniel. No, it's... it's um, yeah, it's interesting. I think, well, I think Daniel, in many ways, is the arc of, you know, it's a couple, but really it's symbolic of the war to me. It's the, that in the beginning there's unity, and then there's this, um, you know, the, the past and the history comes and haunts you and, and for, leads you and tells you this is how you should be, and it guides you and it pushes you. And you resist and you're not naturally a fighter, you don't want to kill your neighbor, and I believe that this was in the heart of the majority of people going through this. 
And, and so many people, the majority of people, many of the parents of the cast are mixed marriage. It was very common. So this couple in the beginning is, to, is true to the area. Yeah. So it's that they were pushed apart. And as they're pushed apart, the things that push them apart, he, he is unable, which is symbolic, he's unable to stand up against his father. He's unable to stand up against the history and the pressure of nationalism. And he's unable not to pick up arms when all the men around him, and he sees men around him who become like his brothers going through, and he, he, loses, he, he loses the sense of what he had in the beginning, and he, he's blinded by the war and the violence and the sounds of the bombs, and he, he goes mad in a way, you know, he loses his humanity. And, and, I, and to me, that is, and, and does the thing that he is then, it's not natural to him, it's not who he is, but it's what he does, and, and she dies, and that's symbolic to me of what, what happened in the war. She died, and he lives with that, and, and so it was, um, it was, there, it was metaphor. I think it's um, absolutely true. <laughs> no, I think it's absolutely true. I just, um, as director myself, thinking very often, are we mirror of what is true, or we are somehow also responsible to give a different view? Sure. So, you decided more for the mirror. Well, I did it, but at the same time, I think there is, um, you know, it's not a documentary, there is dramatic interpretation and license through it, and, and I think there, um, you know, her feelings for him, as you say, are ambiguous, and I think it is, I think it's not just because it's intended to be ambiguous, I think she's torn. And she has reasons to have a rise in anger and hatred and feel that she must. But he's a human being, and she's a human being, and to kill someone is not as an easy choice. And, um, um, but no, it's not, it's, not, um, you know, it's not something where I decided to take a war and then have an, another story on top of it. It is, to me, the story of the war. And, and, um, and I wanted to tell that, I wanted people to think about that. And I wanted, even though I know it's a hard movie to sit through, I've heard. Um, <laughs> but it's supposed to be. Because if you're sitting there and thinking, please let this stop, this is, I don't want to watch this. I don't want this to go on. It's, for me, it's saying, please, international community, please, somebody, stop this. Please come in. Please do something. And that's, and that's the ask of the film. That's, that's who the film is pointing at, to say, if you would have intervened somehow earlier, so much less death, so much less violence. Syria, right now, Syria, Syria. right now happening, right. right now. Exactly. Syria, right now. Holmes. And the longer it goes on, the more babies are killed, the more people are killed. to go out with? Well, I hope a few things. I hope one, you, as, as I can tell you do, which makes me so happy, acknowledge the great talent of an extraordinary region of the world and appreciate them. I hope you uh, recognize the unity of a very brave cast from all over the region who have come together across religious and ethnic lines to come together. And that's a symbol of hope and, and what we should be pushing for and encouraging in the region. Um, and I hope you think of these international issues, as you say, Syria and all the other parts of the world where there's violence against women and where there is war. And when you see war, I hope that these people, maybe because it's the 90s, maybe because it's a movie, but that you relate to them. So when you see on TV tomorrow a bomb exploded in this place, maybe it'll feel that much more familiar because these people feel more familiar and people inside war feel more familiar. And so that was the reason to make the film. Um, so next time I'll do the Q I'll do the question and answer when you come here with your next film. Okay. <laughs> okay. Deal? Okay. <laughs> Moderator, I am. I just have to. 
give it very quickly. It's something, okay. It's, it's something that uh, belongs to me. It's a um, directing skirt that I invented with my designer friends because you can't buy any props. Uh, it's all for men, for directors, huh? So this is directing skirt. Hold the mic, hold the mic. Yes, I will show you. Yes, so you could... Uh, our based on men.